Welcome again to this channel. In this presentation, we are looking at solar PV cables. A solar PV panel cable is used to interconnect the solar panels and other electrical components in a photovoltaic system. The specifications for the solar PV cables should be such that the sheath should be flame and fire retardant. It should also be UV resistant it should be oil, moisture and chemical corrosion resistant and the sheet should also be halogen free for low smoke emission and low toxicity in case of fire. It is also required that the total voltage drop on the cable segment from the solar PV model to the point of use should be a maximum of 2% that is on the DC side. Also the cable strands should be preferred with be tin coated. This is to protect bare copper from oxidation in adverse weather. Also, be aware that uh, electrical and other physical properties vary with manufacturer and there are sometimes cheap imitations in the market. We now look at arrangement of cables in a PV system and this diagram shows us a typical layout of a solar PV installation. In this diagram we see cables running from the module side all across to the inverter side. So to start with, there are about four types of cables that we have in this diagram. We have the PV module cable and these are cables that are pre-connected to the module and can be connected in series or parallel to form a string. So these are the short cables that normally from the back of the module. Then we have the PV string cables this is a cable that now runs from the array taking the power to the combiner. Then we have the PV array cables now from the combiner box to the next electrical component we have the array cable. Now we are saying that this is one array governed by this string combiner box. Then we have a second array governed by this string combiner box and now those two arrays are joined to the sub array combiner they are joined with this cable here then from the sub array combiner to the inverter we have the dc inverter cable they connect the pv array dc connectors to the dc side of the inverter then we have the ac cable running now from the inverter to the electrical loads and that is found on the ac side of the inverter so looking at this arrangement here we can say depending on the type of the inverter the need for the sub-array combiner, this one, can be eliminated by using an inverter with several MPPT inputs. In this case, we can have an inverter with six MPPTs. That will eliminate the need for this sub-array combiner and the string combiner. Because now, the MPPTs cable will go directly to the string and finish the installation. So that decision is normally made when you are selecting your inverter. We now look at cable color codes. These are cable color codes standards that have been adopted in various regions. We can see two prominent standards here which is the NEC and the IEC. Uh, however we are not seeing uh, standards from other regions like uh, China, Russia and Japan. What we have here is that as the adoption of solar energy increases the table for DC will be as populated as that of AC that we are going to see next. We look at the AC cables standards and as I said before these particular color codes for the AC is defined in several regions. We see the IEC, EU and the UK. They have this system here. The New Zealand and Australia have this system. India, Pakistan, South Africa have this system here. Then for the US and Canada there are two color code systems. One for the voltage between 120, 208 and 240 volts. The other for 277 and 480 volts. Then the Japan, uh, Russia, China share this, this one but the Russians have moved on to develop a new color code system which is this one here so as you do your installation 
you'll remember that uh, you cannot just put uh, any cable with any color anywhere. It has to follow these codes. Now let's look at the mathematics that govern voltage drop calculations. We start with looking at the Ohm's law chart which gives us a relationship between power, voltage, resistance and current. From equation 0, 01 governed by Ohm's law, we find that voltage is expressed as being equal to current times resistance and resistance is expressed as being equal to resistivity times the length divided by the area. For DC voltage drop, the voltage resistance equations can be combined such that we end up with equation 03. And for single phase AC, the voltage drop equation can be expressed as equation 04 which the factors in the equation are as defined here. We have the power factor, which if not given by the manufacturer of the inverter or the system, or the specified for the system, use a 0 0.8. Then we have the relationship between the power factor and sine phi, which is expressed in this table here. Then we have X being the reactance and V in that equation being the line to line voltage, also known as phase to phase voltage, where I is the full load current or IMP of the PV in amps where provided and L is equal to length of cable in kilometers. So moving back to our equation, we are told that this part of the equation is very small and can be ignored. We find that uh, this equation can be reduced as voltage drop being equal to 2 times length times current times the resistance times power factor. And further, by replacing R, we end up with equation 0, 05, and therefore percentage voltage drop can be defined as expressed in equation 0, 06. For three-phase AC, however, the equation for voltage drop is expressed as in equation 07. The same terms remain the same for that equation, and voltage drop is expressed as in equation 08. So this table here, as I said earlier, gives you the relationship between cos phi and sine phi, and this is how it is, so that uh, when power factor is 1, this part of the equation is zero and so on. So with those equations we want to look at uh, a worked example so that we can appreciate uh, what we've presented. This worked example is a case of derating the cable carrying capacity due to its installation environment. Uh, we are told that we have a XLPE cable that is to carry uh, 106.4 amps at 744 VDC. Uh, also, we are given that the soil thermal resistivity is not known and that the soil is dry soil. Now, the solution, first of all, is to determine which cable has a capacity to carry uh, 106.4 amps. Uh, we do that by using this equation here that the current carrying capacity is greater or equal to 1.25 times the current that is being carried by the cable which is 106.4 and that gives us 133 amps. Now we use this figure and move to table Four point. We move to table 4.1b. We find that the cable that can carry this current is a cable of 25 millimeter square, and the current that it can safely pass 
is 144 amps. Now we are required to derate this current due to the installation environment of this cable. To check if it has the capacity to carry 106.4 amps. So before we can do that, let us look at the tables which have attached to this uh, presentation so that we can get factors that are required for the calculation or the solution to this problem. These are the tables that are going to give us data to solve the problem and table 4.1b is a table for the XLPE cable and it is for current carrying capacity for single core cables with copper insulated and PVC sheath. For AC, 600 volts conductor to earth and 1 kilovolt conductor to conductor. And for DC, 1000 volts conductor to earth. And it is laid directly to the ground flat. So we see that its carrying capacity is 144 amps. So this is a figure that we want to derate. Now let's see the other tables in uh, that are required for giving us a solution to this problem. Then we move down to rating factors. This is rating factors for ambient air temperature other than 30. If this thing is installed in the air. So we leave that one. We go to rating factors table 4.4 for ground temperature variations other than 20 degrees and here we have these values here then we go to the other rating factor 4.5 which is the depth for laying the cable and hours our cable is 25 millimeter square so we are told up to 50 millimeter square the depth which we have here our rating value is 1.027 then we move on to another rating table, the correction factor for cables buried in soil for thermal resistivity other than 2.5 degrees Kelvin meter per watt and up to 0 0.8 meter depth. In our case, we've been told that the thermal resistivity of the soil is not known. In table 4.7, we are given soil correction factors and our soil is dry soil, which has a rating factor of one. Further, then we have the grouping factors. So depending on how many cables have been put together, then uh, we choose the correct derating factor. In our case, the cable is laid 15 centimeters apart and there are two cables. So we have 0 0.8. So with that, let's go back to our problem. After seeing the properties in those tables, let's continue with our problem. So from the tables, what we have seen, we have the ground temperature correction at 25, table 4.4, which gives us 0 0.96. Then soil correction factor, this is dry soil. We saw that that, that is one. Then depth correction factor of 0 0.5, for 0 0.5 depth, table 4.5, we found that the factor there is 1.027 and the cable separation distance correction factor 15 centimeter we saw that that was 0 0.8 so total derating factor is the multiplication of all this and if you combine all those factors you get 0 0.79 so the derated current carrying capacity of 25 millimeter square cable is what we saw in the table for the cable which was 144 now we derated by 0 0.79 and that gives us 113.6 amps it is required that the cable derated carrying capacity that is should be higher than the current which is passing from the array to the inverter so if we check we see that we were told the current that is coming from the inverter is 106.4 and our cable has a capacity to carry more than 106.4 which now we have is now we have is 113.6 so using these values we can cal now calculate the voltage drop and for that if we put in the figures in the equation for the voltage drop we end up with 8.79 roughly and the percentage now is 
This figure divided by the system voltage which is 744 times 100 and this gives us 1.1 percent. This is good for that section because the voltage drop is just 1.1 percent against the limit which is 2 percent and this is okay. We thank you for having had time to follow this presentation and until next time bye bye for now.